Welcome to part five, I think. Now that we've got the joinery done, we're going to turn our attention to creating the handle. And we're going to make a one and one eighth inch handle, round handle, uh, using a dowel making jig. But first, we've got to prep this blank. This is essentially two three quarter inch walnut boards glued together. I'll throw a picture up here on the screen so that you can see the glue up in the clamps and we're just squaring it here um, on the jointer. Once we get two sides flat and square we'll head over to the table saw to cut it down closer to size. So at the table saw here we're putting the jointed faces down on the table and up against the fence and we'll use that to clean up the other two sides uh, getting it close to our final dimension of an inch and an eighth. And we'll go ahead and set the blade at 45 degrees tilted to the left as this saw does and run the handle through to cut additional material to turn this kind of into a octagonish shape. Removing material in this manner is necessary in order to engage the doweling jig, otherwise it just wouldn't work. Look at that octagon. All right, now that we have our rod cut to our octagonal shape here, we can go ahead and start running it through our little doll making jigger thing. So to do that, I usually just pound a socket on the end of here, have a little adapter, chuck it in the drill, fire away. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on making this jig and setting it up. That's a subject for another video. Uh, however, you can kind of see there's a chisel clamped on top there. It's clamped down to the bench. It's a pretty utilitarian device and it sure is fun to use. You know you want to come through. All right. There we go. There we go. Now we'll grab some sandpaper and head outside for this dusty part of the process. She's smooth. These can be hard to get off, so sometimes I just have to work it around, break it back and forth. So now that we have our dowel complete, it's time to drill holes in the side pieces. And in order to do that, we're going to find a suitable position here and mark a center line. And then we're going to drill that out on the drill press. My measurement here with the calipers, we are, you can't see this, but I can tell you we are just under an inch and an eighth. So I've got an inch and a quarter Forstner bit here, which is going to provide just a little bit of slop in the hole. Uh, we do want this handle to be removable. Uh, once this is assembled, it's not supposed to be a tight fit, so that should provide an adequate, adequate 
amount of clearance. All right, to locate the hole in our side piece here, what I've done is I've marked the center line and now I'm just gonna take the Forstner bit here and look for a suitable location vertically that looks about right. And right on that center mark, we will make an indentation with the point of the bit, simply by pressing downward. All right, so to transfer that point, over to this side, we'll take our cattywampus square here. I really need to get a six inch square. This thing is really a pain. And go ahead and mark that. Now, transfer it over. We can put our pen mark down. And voila, now we have the second point. Okay, we're here at the drill press. First, we need to change the bit out. So get rid of this guy, throw in this guy. All right, there we go. Now, check the speed settings. This is an inch and a quarter, so what's it telling me? In hardwood, I need to be at about 450 RPMs. What are we set at now? We are on D3, so we're at a thousand. That's a little bit, that's a little bit too fast. Mm, we should lower the speed, but you know what? Eh, forget it. I don't wanna waste time doing that. We're real men. We don't need to worry about any, any silly drill press speeds. Fire it up. Oh, that's a little bit high. Bring the table up. Table so you should actually worry about the drill press speed. I'm not advocating not worrying about it, although I sort of am. But it's really not that fast. Just a little above, you know, maybe ideal. Boom, just like that. Now we'll do the other one. Boom. Now we can get our dowel. All right, we got one more step here before assembly and glue up, which is exciting, and that is to hand plane the parts. And we're gonna do that, get rid of all the marking lines that are on there, any pen marks, things like that. So let's go ahead and get that done, and then we can proceed to assembly. So let's straighten you out here so you can see the, see the business end of this workbench here. All right, so what we're gonna do Gonna go ahead and grab our number five here. And we've got our parts laid out. We've got our sides, lateral sides, our side sides, and our bottom bottom. And we're just gonna go ahead and start smoothing those out. Now, remember, we've got the inside marked. So I uh, wanna make sure we don't forget which side that is. And as always, we check the grain direction. Looks like it's running out of the board like this. So we'll go ahead and uh, get her in here. Get her in the vise. Oh yeah. All right. Grab some plain wax. Our blade is still sharp. So we'll go ahead start making our smoothing passes. Just light little shaving. Don't need these to be heavy at all. Got 
Got a little planer snipe here that we're taking care of. All right. Um, still got more snipe on that end. Snipe. What is snipe? Isn't that the name of that creature that, like, when you were a kid, people could would tell you, like, you go snipe hunting, something like that? I, somehow I recall that from my childhood. Although maybe that's not it. All right. Just going from one side to the other. We want to make sure we take an even amount across the board. Don't want to introduce any type of a taper or anything like that. And this guy is about done. We're gonna take one more pass. And these are full, full thickness shavings coming off of this baby here, All right? Three, another one, four, another one, and five, just the little, the little end. So there we go, there's the inside. That baby is done. Now we can flip her over. Actually, you know what? Did I flip it end for end or side to side? I think I flipped it side to side. I did. You want to flip them end to end. That way you may you continue going with the grain. Uh, no big deal. I'm sure I would have noticed that about halfway through this. Okay, there's the bottom. All right, let's do the sides now. We already did the inside, recall, so we don't want to redo that because that'll uh, proverbially F up the fit of our dovetails. So, however, uh, I was gonna say, if we had some marks up here at the top, from doing doing some drilling we we could take care of those now at least up there but that one looks good so we'll go ahead and focus on the outside all right looking at grain direction looks like we need to orient it this way in the vise so at this point we're just going to continue smoothing these boards I'll speed the footage up a little bit because uh, well you've seen this before but to clarify a couple of things First off, if you don't know what planer snipe is, if you haven't been around woodworking very long or had experience with that, it's basically a result of running a board through the thickness planer, the powered planer, not the hand plane. By the way, a hand plane is called a plane. A power planer is called a planer. So keep that in mind. And when only one roller is engaged in the power planer, meaning as the board enters, only the front roller will be engaged, and as it exits, only the rear roller will be engaged. The cutter head is down just a little bit and tends to take a heavier cut at the front and ends of the board. I'll try to throw a picture up here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Anyway, we can take care of that with hand planes as part of this process here. And another interesting decision I made while going through this smoothing process is I did not remove all of the marking lines uh, that were created as part of the dovetail joinery. I thought they maybe looked kind of cool and rustic. That's a word we've thrown around a bit here. So I left some of those lines in and you'll see that in the finished product. I think it looks okay. I don't know. Maybe I should have taken them out. Eh, too late now. There we go. There we go. Not going to get smoother than that, not with sandpaper anyway. 
Okay, we're ready for the glue up and we're going to begin by talking about what surfaces we're going to be gluing. And as a rule of thumb, it's generally best to avoid gluing end grain because those glue joints are, are fairly weak in nature. And so if we look at the joints we have here, we've got an end grain joint to a long grain joint there, so that's not going to be a good glue joint. We've got the same thing on the other side. With the dovetails, we have side grain here, however, we have end grain on the pin. So that's not going to be a good glue joint either. Uh, looking at this, the, the main surfaces for glue are going to be the edge of our bottom board glued to the side of our lateral sides. It's going to be the face of the tail, the face of the tail glued to the face of the pin board and those are going to be those are really going to be our, our main glue joints. We will apply some glue to the top and bottom of the tail regardless uh, as, as that will help lock things together even though it may not be the strongest glue joint. So let's go ahead and get started. The supplies we're using today, I've got Tight Bond 3 in this container. I've got a spreader here to help uh, you know, on the, on the tight areas. And of course, paper towels. Uh, always have paper towels nearby when you're working with glue. So, we'll go ahead and get started glue with the glue up here. The other thing I like to do before even starting in order to keep glue off my workbench is to put down put down some paper here that will help keep glue off the bench help with cleanup later <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and do that Start by applying glue to the edge of the bottom board. Don't need a lot, just enough to cover the surface and get a little bit of squeeze out. We want to try to limit the squeeze out if we can. It avoids cleanup later. Okay, there's one side. We'll get the other side here. This glue applicator makes it really handy when when gluing, uh, rather than using a large a little more there. Using a large bottle, it actually allows you to buy glue in the larger, I don't know, if it's half gallon container or gallon, whatever it is, and, uh, and use it over time and that saves cost. So then uh, we'll apply glue to our tails. Glue ups can be a little bit stressful, um, but this Type Bond 3 has decent open time, uh, certainly enough to handle this glue up. And again, try to keep the glue off of the inside face as that is finished at this point. And we will glue the other. Spread it around. I just use my finger half the time. Okay, and then sometimes it's easier just to take your little tool here, put some glue on the end of it, and get the tails. Just like that. The other 
side. And last one. Could have done this in parts, done half of the assembly and then this other half. However, um, well, this is going to be a little bit awkward here. I'm just going to go in with the pin board here and then this pin board here. Okay, there's the start. Line those up. Come on, there we go. Okay. I got a little glue there, so it's not the greatest, but we'll take our mallet here. Wood. Okay. Now flip this over. Set in the other side. should line up, we hope. Okay. Okay. So those are in. Go ahead and Okay. Now everything's in place. We need to Get some clamps going here. Wipe some of the glue off here. And we want to make sure the bottom piece is fully seated. One thing we could do is uh, well, let's get one more clamp up here to counteract that and rotate it up. Tighten this guy down and pull around these. Okay, I'm pulling the tails in just to make sure they're fully seated and there aren't any gaps, which this one looks to be a slight gap here at the top, so we'll just pull that in like so. I'm actually going to get one more there to throw in. Okay, we don't have any gaps in the tails. Let's check this side. Yeah. This looks good for the most part. Maybe a little along the bottom there. Get that pulled in nice and tight. There we go. <laughs> I 
Okay, there we have it. Uh, not too big a deal here on this glue up. It went together pretty easily and, and fortunately that means that the dovetails were cut correctly. Uh, we hope uh, what we'll do uh, once the glue dries is take it out of the clamps. We will plane down these, uh, the pins and the tails because they're currently proud of the surface. Uh, and and then, then we'll get to see what the final fit looks like. And if we do have any gaps, which I really hope we don't, but if we do, we'll take care of them, we'll fix them, I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, only a couple parts remain. Uh, that being, we're going to install a divider down the center here. Uh, we're going to put additional security on the bottom piece, although we probably don't need it because the edge gluing is, is certainly enough. Uh, however, we're gonna put some dowels in there. Uh, we'll dowel in the center divider and then we will install the handle and I need to come up with a creative solution to secure the handle in the workpiece. So, nearly there. Uh, see you next time.